Welcome to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show, a real estate investment program. Listen and learn how to use real estate to build wealth and passive income streams for you and your family. We bring you experts every day to discuss and answer your questions on everything from single family homes all the way up to 600 plus unit apartment complexes. And now, the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Well, hey there. Good afternoon. Good Saturday afternoon. This is David Ruzica. I'm a Lifestyles member. I am a real estate investor. I'm also the free workshop presenter, one of the free workshop presenters for Lifestyles. Uh, would love to have you join me. I'm going to actually be doing two of them this next week, one on Tuesday at 930 at night. It's going to be so late because we have people in California. I think even some people in Hawaii. Well, I know we have some people in Hawaii that sometimes tune in. And so uh, go to our web page and you can check that out or freeworkshoplivestream.com. Also doing one on Thursday night at 630. But I'm excited today because I'm going to be talking about Dell's three rules of investing. Three rules of investing. Now, I have a lot of experience with investing. I actually started investing when I was five years old. I had my first share of stock. I actually had two shares of stock. I had a share of Dr. Pepper, and uh, I had a share of a company called Varian Associates. It was actually a technology company, one of the first Silicon Valley companies. This is in 1967, so different kind of technology. We hadn't landed on the moon yet, so you know, a computer the size of a city block was not as powerful as your phone. So it was back, back, way back in the day. If we had kept that stock, I might, I might be rich right now. I mean, I mean, I might have been a multi, multi millionaire from that one share of stock. I don't know. Uh, but I had my share of Dr. Pepper. My dad worked for EF Hutton. When EF Hutton talks, people listen. I even had a shirt that had that phrase on it. My dad gave it to me. I never wore it. Who in the world would wear a t-shirt for a brokerage firm when you're in high school? I had a Yamaha motorcycle shirt. I had ZZ Top shirts. I had cowboy shirts. But who wears a brokerage firm t-shirt in high school? What the heck? What a great gift. Um, anyway, I have the best dad in the world. Let me make sure and state that. But he got me interested in investing right off the bat. As a five-year-old, I knew how, to, knew how to open up the newspaper. I knew how to look at it and see did I gain or did I lose half of a quarter or 12 and a half cents, which is big money in 1967 for a five-year-old kid. Went to college, got an MBA. I came to Houston, Texas to work for EF Hutton. So you could say I was a professional investor at that point. I was to actually as a young man helping people invest. I was smart about it though. I didn't try to pick stocks for people. I put them with money managers who could actually do a good job at that. Uh, then I ended up investing a lot of time in seminary and becoming a pastor, which I did for 22 years. And as a pastor, you could say I invest in people. That's the hardest kind of investing you can do. It's like Del Wamsley says, he says, real estate is easy people are difficult. And that is so true. The reason people fail in real estate, there are two reasons. One, either they don't have a good map, an effective map. We have a perfect map, actually, with lifestyles. Or if you do have a an effective map, the reason you fail is because you are difficult and don't follow the instructions. In fact, Dell, during the two-day class, he always says, turn to the back of the book and write down, I did not do what Dell told me to do. Because when you have a problem, that's going to be the reason. In ministry, you could say the Bible is easy. Doing the right thing is easy, but people are difficult. And that's so true. I don't say that in a judgmental way at all. I'm as difficult as anybody can be. So when someone comes with all that investing background... When someone comes along and says, I've got three rules of investing, and those rules have made that person a multi-multi-millionaire, I'm thinking, I want to listen. That gets my attention. I want to see what in the world they're talking about. And the uh, first time I ever heard that, I thought, really, three rules of investing? What the good? I mean, I had a lot of respect for Dell because I knew I'd heard him on the radio. My wife had heard him for years, and I thought, I really need to find out what this is about. Most of the stockbrokers I've known who became multimillionaires, they didn't become multimillionaires because of their stock investing acumen. No, they became multimillionaires because of their sales ability, their, their ability to get other people to do investing, not because of the kind of investing they picked. There are some that are good at that, but the one most that I knew, uh, just they were just good salespeople. Uh, so I'm going to tell you, you need to hang on and listen up because if you want to know how to invest and do it effectively, I'm going to lay it out for you in the most fundamental fashion possible. First, I want to start with Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett is um, a lot of people, a lot of stock investors look to Warren Buffett for guidance. What they don't realize is that he is in a very different business than they are. Warren Buffett is not sitting behind a PC on his Ameritrade account, buying and selling stocks for his 401k. In other words, he's not buying stocks at retail with his own money. He is buying entire companies at wholesale with other people's money. That's what you want to do. You want to buy wholesale, not retail. That's how you retire. Warren Buffett said, if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work until you die. 
Washington Post article just, uh, gosh, I want to say it was in the last 30 days, said baby boomers are reaching retirement age in poverty, in poverty at a greater rate than any previous generation. Now, here's the thing. You want to find a way to make money while you sleep. You do that with passive income and you get there by paying wholesale prices, not retail prices. There's a big difference between retail and wholesale. Makes all the difference in the world. Buffett finds companies that he can find for 50 cents on the dollar. He scours the industry, learns the industry inside and out, and then buys a company. Now, on diversification, you say, where's the diversification in that? People say, oh, I got to be diversified. I'll buy this stock and I'll buy that stock and I'll buy gold because rocks are good. They don't produce any income. They don't do anything. It's just a rock. But I'm going to buy some of that too because I heard I should diversify so that when one asset is doing poorly, another one's doing well. So I have a nice mediocre rate of return with zero cash flow. Here's what Warren Buffett said about diversification. He said, diversification is protection against ignorance. Diversification makes little sense for those who know what they're doing. He got rich purchasing whole companies at wholesale. Del Wamsley became a multimillionaire by purchasing single family and multifamily rentals, rental properties at wholesale, not from a wholesaler. That's different. That's a one investment strategy. You can make a lot of money that way. Uh, You can also lose your shirt because wholesalers have no fiduciary responsibility. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, don't worry about it. Just know that wholesaling is not something you want to do unless you've got some really good uh, education because a lot of wholesalers have the morals of snakes and rats. No offense, no offense. I just couldn't help myself. Anyway, when we get back on the other side, I'm going to start in with the three rules. We're going to start with the first one, which is don't lose money. So glad you're here with me today. I'm going to talk to you about how to retire in five years or less. Hang out with me for a little bit longer. We'll have a good time. Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. We're here to answer your questions and help you become financially free. Hey, good afternoon again. This is David with Lifestyles of David Rizika with Lifestyles Unlimited Radio. Glad you're with me this afternoon. We're talking about we're talking about the three rules of investing. Dell Walmsley's three rules of investing. You know, Warren Buffett said something. He said, if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work until you die. I remember sitting in a in a Lifestyles Unlimited uh, seminar and I'm looking at my financial map and I'm thinking, you know what? I'm going to be my grandmother lived to be 103. I seem to get a lot of her genetics. I'm going to be 102 years old. I'm going to be working at Walmart. I'm going to be greeting people as they come in uh, because I'm never going to retire. And then I heard uh, Dell's three rules of investing, and the last one especially, and well, second, the th- actually the second and the third one. And I thought, wait, there may be a map that I can use where I don't have to work until I'm 102 greeting people at Walmart, unless I just want to. I may just enjoy that. Who knows? But Let's get going with rule number one. Rule number one is don't lose money. <laughs> and when I, I mean, I'm saying that I'm thinking, wow, thank you for stating the obvious, David. That's really made my day. I really I've got everything going on now. Don't lose money. And uh, how is that even possible? Is that possible? Question I want to ask you is why do you put your money into investments that can lose you money? Why would you do that? Why would you want to do that? We teach you to buy properties for 50 cents on the dollar. When you buy an asset for so cheap, it is very hard to lose money on it. One thing that Warren Buffett also does when he's doing his investing, he's buying companies at a discount, not at at wholesale, not at retail. I talked about that before the break. Uh, He is using leverage to amplify his wealth exponentially. In his early years of investing, he actually went door to door in his neighborhood to raise money for his investments. When you're using the power of leverage to buy assets for 50 cents on the dollar, that's how you make it to financial freedom. That's how you achieve real financial freedom. That's how became, that's how Buffett became rich. And that's how you can increase your wealth exponentially. David Fisher, one of our uh, Lifestyles uh, instructors, he does the two-day class. 
uh, also a partner of mine on a small apartment complex in Corpus Christi. He's worth over $8 million. His income last year was $2 million. I'm going to repeat that. It's really important for you to understand that. He's worth over $8 million. His income last year was $2 million and all tax-free. 100% 100% tax-free because of the way he did it. So it's really the, it's the same as 3 or $4 million. He was a stock market guru before he got into real estate. In 2008, 2009, he turned $500,000 in the stock market into 70000 I said that right. I didn't mistake. I didn't make a mistake. I said he's a stock market guru. He turned 500000 into 70000 You say, why would you say he's a guru? Well, think about that. That's an amazing investor. I need to ask him one day. I'm around him all the time. We never do talk about it, though. I need to say, how did you do that? You really have to work to turn half a million dollars into $70,000. That takes some real effort. It's not like you can just throw stuff in there and just make it do that. That's, That's a difficult task. That might be as difficult as making money in the stock market. And yet, here's the truth. Some of you... and. I want to repeat again, he made $2 million last year. His net worth is $8 million, okay? We're going to come back to that. That's important. But some of you have experienced some level of loss in the stock market, but you keep going back. Uh, It's like they say, the definition of of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. Some of you experienced Black Monday. I did as the first year that I was a stockbroker, largest single-day drop in the stock market. Some of you also experienced in the dot-com bust in 1999 and 2000, and then you experienced what David Fisher experienced in 2008. Now, don't get me wrong. I love the stock market. The stock market is great for speculation. It's great for gambling. It is a great place for a company to raise capital to build their company, to raise it from you and me. But it is not an investment for the average worker. For the average worker with a 401k and an S&P index fund, it is just a savings plan with periodic losses. In fact, Warren Buffett's long-term prediction for stocks in the coming years is 7% annually. And 30-year return for the stock market is, uh, I want to say, 7 to 8% uh, annually, average, at any 30-year period. Now, if you're unlucky enough to want to retire when one of those crashes hits, 1987, 1990, 2000, 2008, if you're lucky enough to want to retire then, or unlucky enough, when that crash hits, hello, another 10 years of work. You had your money all sacked away. You're thinking, okay, I'm going to live off this. Hope that I die before I run out. All of a sudden, you have 70% of what you had or 80% of what you had or 50% of what you had or you rode half a million dollars down to 70000 David Fisher lost $430,000 in 2008, half a million to 70000 Michelangelo at losing money. I asked him at our last two-day class. I I go to one weekend a month. I go to San Antonio to his office and do the two-day class with him, and I ask questions from the audience, things like that. And I asked him, I said, have you ever lost money on any of your single-family investing or your multifamily deals in the last 10 years? He said, in the last 10 years of real estate investing, he had no experience when he started real estate investing, none at all. He had actually read a lot of comic books, uh, played a lot of video games, loved Star Trek, no real estate background at all. In the last 10 years of real estate investing with no experience, he has never lost money ever. All he did, he joined Lifestyles Unlimited. He followed the map. He went out and started investing and started making money and went from 65000 a year in income to $2 million a year in income. Now, how do you do that? How do you go for 10 years without ever losing money? Well, one way, you have to have a good map. You have to have good education. I mean, Warren Buffett, the way he does so well is because he picks an industry. He knows the industry inside and out. Then he picks a company. He knows the company inside and out before he buys it. He's not ignorant about what's going on. Same thing with real estate. You've got to know what you're doing. You need a mentor. You need somebody who's already been down the road, someone who's been where you want to be. Someone like Adele Wamsley, someone like a David Fisher, who's come with no experience at all and been incredibly successful. You want to learn from success. So got to have a good map. Got to have good education. Here's how we do it. And then we only invest our money in assets that don't risk our principal. So what assets would qualify as not risking principal? Well, stocks? No, absolutely not. You're, you're risking your principal with stocks. We already demonstrated that. How about gold? Well, again, it drives me crazy when I see the, the commercials on TV about, I like to buy gold, or diversify my portfolio. That's insane. It's a, it's, a, it's a freaking rock, and it doesn't do anything. It doesn't give any cash flow. Uh, and gold, in the last 10 years, has gone up and down a high of 2100 to a low of 1100 1100 and some change. So 
Absolutely, you can lose your principal. You buy some gold right now, next year, might be worth half what you bought it for. How about retail real estate? Can you lose your principal investing in re- in real estate at retail prices? Absolutely, you can. Very first house we bought, we paid a retail price. A couple years later, we're thinking, oh, we might want to sell it. But right down the street, brand new subdivision opened up. You could buy our house for what we needed to sell it for because we got it. We put as little money down as we could. Uh, not a good decision. And uh, But down the street, you could buy a house that was much like ours, only with seven pools and a brand new subdivision, all the updates and everything like that. So, yes, you can lose money in retail real estate. We're going to go on to the next step of this. Don't lose money when we get back from the break. So hang on with me. Glad to have you here on Lifestyles Unlimited. Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Now, let's get back to your map to financial freedom. Hey, glad you're with me this Saturday afternoon. This is David Ruzica. I said at the very beginning, I am a real estate investor. I'm a member of Lifestyles Unlimited. But no, I also do the free workshops. I've got two coming up this week. They're all live streamed. So you can watch them in your pajamas. Uh, Go to freeworkshoplivestream.com and you can sign up or just go to our website, Look up Google Lifestyles Unlimited, and I'm doing one at 9.30 at night Central Time on Tuesday night. Please come hang out with me. I don't want to be alone. Also doing one at, I think it's 6.30 on Thursday night. I actually like doing the 9.30 one. It's kind of fun. But uh, before the break, we were talking about rule number one, don't lose money. So I was talking about losing principal. What assets can you buy where you will never lose money? And David Fisher, who in 10 years of real estate experience with investing with no experience, has never lost money in real estate. So we want to only invest in assets that don't risk our principal. Stock, we're going to, we can lose money. Gold, we can lose money. Retail, real estate. Mentioned right before the break, we bought a house in, to live in. I think it was about 1990 or so. And right down the street, after we bought our house, within the next year, a brand new subdivision moved in. With uh, you could buy our house when we were ready to sell it. You could buy our house with it's just a it was a great house. It was a nice house, but it was but you could buy a house in this subdivision that had seven gigantic pools. And when I say pools, I mean they're like Six Flags or something for for kids at the pool. Also a lot of more a lot more updates, and you could pay just a few thousand more. So retail we barely just we barely got out of there with our shirts. So you can. Lose money with retail real estate, but wholesale real estate. Can you lose your money when you're investing? Can you lose your principal when investing at 50 cents on the dollar? Only if you mismanage it. Only if you mismanage it. When you buy real estate at wholesale prices, you can only lose lose money if you mismanage it. Remember what I said, real estate is easy. People are difficult. Now, We can't all go out and buy massive companies for 50 cents on the dollar like Warren Buffett. The easiest way for you to emulate him is with real estate because you can go out and you can buy a single family home for 50 cents on the dollar and start to build wealth like Warren Buffett and like Dell Wamsley. And that's how you keep from losing money. On top of that, when you buy it, it's going to have cash flow. That's going to keep you from losing money. You're going to buy it with equity capture. That's going to keep you from losing money. That's where you buy a property uh, with an appraisal that says after you fix it up in sixty de- within 60 days, it'll be worth more than you paid. For instance, you buy a house for $50,000, you spend $25,000 on rehab, so you're all in for $75,000, but now it's worth $100,000. So you've got, you have a $25,000 equity cushion. Is that going to protect you from loss? Absolutely. Unless you buy on an Indian burial ground like in Poltergeist. Happy Halloween, everybody. But even then, you're going to move the burial ground and rebuild it with other people's money. That's called insurance. We teach you how to do all these things to keep from losing money. Insurance will take care of that. You're making money with principal pay down. Every time someone, every time your renter pays you rent, you're taking that money, you're paying the mortgage. That principal is dropping. You've got, uh, you've got protection there. Also depreciation. You keep from losing money because you're making money in residential real estate in five different ways. What other asset can you invest in where you make money in so many different ways? None. Think about it. With a stock, you have one guard against loss. Appreciation. With a single family house, you've got five guards against loss. With gold, you've got 
one guard against loss. A price goes up. That's it. With a single family ho- house, you have five guards against loss. Let's say, let's say of those five ways, let's say two of them are a bust. The numbers didn't work. You didn't follow the instructions. You really messed things up. Something's haywire. You still got three other ways you're making money so you don't lose money. You see, it makes it so easy when you have all these guards to make it a safer investment. So rule number one is don't lose money. Rule number two, it has to cash flow, has to cash flow. If you are if taking notes, rule number one is don't lose money. Rule number two is it has to cash flow. Wu-Tang Crew came out with a song called Cream. Horrible lyrics, horrible lyrics. I don't think the song sounds good either, but I do love the acronym Cream. That is so good. Cream stands for cash rules everything around me. Like I said, explicit lyrics, don't go look it up. I didn't recommend it, but I do like cream. Cash rules everything around me. Stocks used to have some cash flow. Dividends were kind of common, rare today. I mentioned two weeks ago, Exxon. Exxon is one of the three companies in the world that has a credit rating above the United States government. The other two are Microsoft and Johnson & Johnson, in case you're wondering. Dividend yield on Exxon right now is 10%. You say, David, that's so good. That's awesome. Yeah, you know why it's so high? Because the price has dropped 50%. That's why. So you lost your principal. And total return over the last 20 years? 9% total return. Total return over the last five years, negative 8.2%. You lost money. When I say total return, I mean dividend plus stock appreciation or stock price drop, negative 8.2%. And of course, more and more companies uh, do away with dividends because people are more focused on appreciation. Cash flow is the foundation of Dell Walmsley philosophy and the way that we build wealth. Let me put it this way. Cash flow is the cake. Everything else is icing. Don't buy an asset unless it cash flows. If you only buy assets that cash flow, how much do you care if they go down in value? Well, a lot less than if all you're relying on is appreciation. If you want to double your equity every two to five years, we teach you how to do that in the two-day class. But before you even buy a property, you're going to analyze it, and you're going to make sure that after the principal, interest, taxes, and insurance, you're going to get at a bare minimum 8%. Because if all else fails, you have a property that is self-sustaining and is kicking off passive income of 8%. But I will tell you, on the high end, I've had a property that cash flowed 70%. On the bottom end, 15%. Just for grins, I went and looked today and see to see what some of the life, Lifestyles Unlimited Realtors, what, what the cash flow is on properties that are offered. Here's a property in Houston. Cash flow is $467 per month or 21.7% cash flow. When is the last time you had a mutual fund that gave you cash flow of 21.7%? I mean, could could $467 change your life? For some of you, maybe not at all, but for some, for some of you are thinking, wow, that would pay my utilities. That would be nice. Here's another one. This one is in Bay City outside of Houston. It's a duplex, 35% cash on cash. That's incredible, 34%. When is the last time you had a stock that gave you any cash flow like that? Here's one in Houston. 26, that, by the way, if you live outside of the state, you can invest in Houston. Uh, we can show you how to do that, but uh, you don't have to be here to do it. 26, uh, sorry, 18.2% cash on cash. I just went through and looked at the last so many deals. I didn't pick them out. I didn't, I, I didn't like pick the best ones or anything like that. These are just what have come to me in the last four days. 22.4% cash on cash in Houston, in South Houston. This one doesn't say... I have to scroll down. The number's too small, so I'm going to skip it. It is good. It was over $400 $400 a month cash flow. This one is 18% cash on cash. That's in Huntsville, north of Houston. Oh, here's one in Hitchcock, Texas. 47.7% cash on cash. $1,021 a month cash flow with $27,000, a $27,000 investment. It's a duplex, so that's why the cash flow is a little bit higher. But $1,021, could $1,021... At one thousand and twenty-one dollars, change your life. You bet it would. You gotta have cash flow. Number one, don't lose money. Number two, it has to cash flow. Cream. Every cash rules everything around me. Hang with me till the break. We're gonna wrap this up in the last twelve minutes or so and uh, talk a little bit more on these three rules of investing. Glad you're here today. It comes a point in time every now and then when the world flips upside down. And during that time, you have to come up with a decision in your life. How are you going to go through this? How are you going to work your way through this process that has no end? 
So what do you do? The first thing I need you to understand is that almost every entrepreneur out there makes it big when something bad happens. I tripled my net worth between 2008 and 2010. Ten years straight increase in value. It makes us all look like geniuses when everything goes up for 10 years straight. But now we're at the point where we can find out who's good again. And you need to be in there. Because why? Because I tripled my net worth in two years. You can do it too if you know what to do. You need to get into lifestyles right now. Join us for our free live online workshop. Register at lifestylesunlimitedworkshop.com. Warning. Listening to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show will change your life. We will teach you how to create wealth and passive income so you can be financially free. And now, back to your host. Hey, David Ruzica here with Lifestyles Unlimited Radio. Glad you're with me this afternoon, Saturday afternoon. I'm a Lifestyles member and a real estate investor. I was listening during the break and I heard Dell's commercial there where he talked about from 2008 to 2010, he tripled his net worth. Times of great uncertainty are the best times to invest. Probably some of you right now are sitting there thinking, you know what? I'm going to wait till this thing kind of clears up, gets over, blah, 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 whatever happens. No, no, that is the wrong approach. Uh, the times of when, when everybody says, oh, let's get in the market. That's the worst time to invest. The best time is when everybody says, no, no, we got to get out of the market. John Templeton, who inv started in his investing uh, in 1939 as Hitler was rolling across uh, Europe, he said, and, and then had and increased his portfolio by 500% over the next couple of years. He said, the time of maximum pessimism is the best time to buy. The time of maximum optimism is the best time to sell. So I just want to encourage you. Uh, and he said, well, oh, those are two superstars. Who cares? Well, there, there's a couple here with Lifestyles Unlimited. They actually joined Lifestyles in 2008. Same time that Dell's talking about from 2008 to 2010 when he tripled his net worth. Sean was an Air Force veteran and Heather was a marketing executive. They joined because they wanted to quit relying on their W-2 income. They built pretty quickly a, a portfolio of 16 single family homes. Now they run, they have five multifamily communities. That's apartment complexes totaling 534 doors. They said Lifestyles Unlimited allowed them to both retire from corporate America, which in turn allowed us to add value to people's lives every day. So again, 2008, normal people, not Del Wamsley superstar, not John Templeton, and you know, in the 1939, but two average people with no real estate background retired themselves. So it's time for you to do that too. We are talking about the three rules of investing. As I said at the beginning, I quoted Warren Buffett. He said, if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work until you die. And so we want to discover how to do that. Rule number one is don't lose money. We only invest our money in assets that don't risk our principal. When we are buying real estate, residential real estate at 50 cents on the dollar, we're making money in five different ways. So we have a huge cushion to protect our principal. We're not buying land. We're not doing speculative real estate. We're buying something that everybody has has to have. Everybody has to have a place to live. So that blue collar home uh, that for or apartment community is our sweet spot because that's what everyone has to have. I remember my mom telling me years ago, why don't you sell life insurance? Because everybody has to have life insurance. Everybody doesn't have to have a stock. So and she was right. Same thing here. Everybody has to have a place to live. Businesses go out of business all the time, but people always have to have a place to live. And so residential real estate is the place to invest so you don't lose money. Plus, you're making money in five different ways, so you have a huge cushion to protect our principal. Number two, it has to cash flow. I said right before the break, cream, cash rules everything around me. Cash flow is the cake. Everything else is the icing. You don't buy an asset unless it cash flows. Uh, if your asset cash flows, what do you care how much it goes down in value? And I just went through some deals that have come across my desk in the last five days. Every single one of them was 15%. I think the high was 30% or 40% cash flow residential real estate that you could invest in. Now, before you go to buy a property, as I said, you want to make sure that it's going to cash flow because that's how you're going to retire yourself. See, here's how you retire yourself. You go by and you buy one single family property, $400 a month cash flow. That's the average right now in the Houston area, in San Antonio area, maybe not quite as high in Dallas area. That's where I am. And so I'm in Houston. And so $400 a month in cash flow, boom, your utilities are paid. You go out and you invest in another property. 
Another four hundred dollars a month in cash flow. Boom, you've got a car payment covered. You go out and buy another piece of property. Another four hundred dollars a month in cash flow. Boom, you got part of the mortgage paid. And you keep doing that, chunking away at those expenses until you're retired. I love listening to Tony Robbins. He just has the most powerful voice. I'm, I should try to imitate him. No, I'm not going to do that. He said this. He said he says some things that are just really good. He said, in order to create change, you have to do two things. You have to raise your standards and turn your shoulds into must. Now, we're still on cash flow. Has, rule number two has to have cash flow. Rule number one, don't lose money. Uh, he says, raise your stand. You have to raise your standards. And so you need to raise your standards every year. See, the difference in the outcome in people's life is not skill. It's not innate ability. It's the standards people set for themselves. I can't remember the guy's name, but quarterback for A&M a and couple years ago had a gambling problem. He's out of professional football now. One of the most gifted, talented football players probably ever could have just done amazing, amazing things out of football. Michael Jordan tells about being in high school. As a sophomore, he didn't make the varsity. Humiliated. The guy who got the spot wasn't as good as he was, but he was taller, and so the coach picked him. The coach said for the night next year, Michael raised his standards. He was at school at 7 a.m. When the gym would open, he was there, and they're practicing every single morning. He was great because he had high, high standards for himself. You want lasting change in your life. I know you do. You wouldn't be listening right now. You have to raise your standards and you have to turn some shoulds into musts. Turn shoulds into must. I hear people all the time. They say, oh, I've been listening to Dale Walmsley for years. I know I should do something. I just keep putting it off. That will create no change, zero change in your life. You're wasting your time. No, turn that should into a must. Raise your standards. Stop accepting the ridiculous notion that you should have your money in a mutual fund that pays you absolutely nothing in cash flow with what Warren Buffett says in the future will be a 7% return in the stock market. So here you go. Here's here's your current goal if you're an average American. This, this is what the financial experts tell us. You need to have $1 million to $1.5 million to retire. That's what the experts say. So we're going to you work to do that. You accumulate this big pile of money as much as you can. It goes into your savings plan because it's in a 401k. You can't touch. You can't do anything with it. And it's just getting an average rate of return. You pull out. You're going to pay taxes on it anyway. And then you're going to get that money. When you retire, that $1 million, you're going to live off of that. And you're going to hope that you die before you run out. Oh, by the way, and that $1 million is going to pay you about 6%, so 60000 a year. So you're not going to be living the, the high life. You're probably going to be living off part of that principle. Now, you're probably not even going to do that. Because the average 60-something, that is age 60 to 69, the average 60-something in America has savings of 172000 not a million or 1.5. That means if you earn 6% cash flow, you're now living on 10000 a year. Or for two years, or if you consume your retirement dollars. I will tell you, if you have 172000 you can retire yourself in five years or less on that money. And I'll tell you how to do that if you come to a free workshop. I can give, give you the details on that. And But if you have 172000 and you're thinking you're going to live off that cash flow of 6%, you're going to be living on spam. You're going to have or in dog food to save money. So average or below average, you will spend your golden years at Walmart greeting people as they come in until you're too old, and then you'll live off the government again eating spam. So raise your standards. I want you to have better goals than trying to accumulate a pile of cash. I don't want you to have bigger goals. Bigger is not necessarily better. Better is better. Better is better. So what is your goal? What amount of income would you need? I want you to think right now. What amount of income would you need to be financially free? Is it $3,000 a month? A lot of people could live off $3,000. Is it $10,000 a month? Maybe it's $15,000, but you'd like to give $5,000 away every month to church, to help other people, whatever you want to do with that. You just want to be a charitable person. I want your better goal to be better than your strongest excuse. Because you can do this. I want your better goal to be better than your strongest excuse. What is your better goal? What is it for you? What amount of income would you need to be financially free? And then I want you to raise your standards and stop believing that it's going to take $1.5 million to get there. Because it's not. That's a live off the principle and hope I die before I run out plan. No. Live off that money's productivity and get there in five years or less. Much less. Because if you bought, if you did your investing using Dell's first rule, you're not going to lose money. You're going to have cash flow, and that cash flow is what is going to retire you. So rule number one is don't lose money. Rule number two has to have cash flow. Cream, cash rules everything around me. Rule number three is you can't get rich slow. You can't get rich slow. Now, that's such a paradox. What does that mean? Well, here's the thing. 
You're not going to save your t- way to retirement. Most people are not going to save their re- way to retirement. I mean, okay, there are some people out there, they're making half a million dollars a year, uh, but there are some people out there making 250000 a year, and they're not going to save their way to retirement because they're spending every dime that comes in. Whatever, whatever they, amount of money they make, they raise their standard of living to that level and spend every dime. So unless you're making Buku's amount of money, you're not going to save yourself retirement. You need to get rich fast. You can't do it slow. And what's interesting is if you become more conservative and only put your money in solid assets, you actually outperform those so-called aggressive investors. Now, how does this work? Well, some of you have equity in your home. That money is sitting right there. It's not making any money. It's worse than an investment in a gold brick. A gold brick doesn't cost you taxes. It doesn't cost you insurance. It, it just sits there. You don't have to pay taxes on it. And you don't have, and oh, there's no maintenance on it either. If you have all your money stuck in a house, you can take that money out and you can make that money productive for you. Let's say you have $100,000. You could take that money and you could produce on $100,000. You could produce possibly up to $5,000 a month in passive income. Would that change your life? Would that change your life? Would that make a difference in your lifestyle? Get you on the way to retirement? You bet it would. The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show constitutes an endorsement recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.